Hi everyone, it's me again. This morning, we give you a piece of breaking news: the estranged wife of the Scarface Russian oligarch who sold his 11 million pound mansion to Prince Harry and Meghan Markle has slammed Meghan for the alleged hypocrisy that keeps coming. Emma Fedoseva, who was involved in a bitter court battle with the billionaire ex-bank boss Sergey Grishin, speaking from Russia to the Sun on Sunday. Miss Fedoseva said, "Megan struggles for women's rights, but in my case, that means just to be alive. It isn't wise for them to surround themselves with him or anyone affiliated with him. They're total hypocrites. They'll do anything and deal with anyone, however questionable, to feather their own nest." Miss Fedoseva also slammed Megan and Harry and their staff for showing a lack of due diligence before making their purchase. She said that house should never have been purchased by people who need to make mortgage payments. They had to borrow sixty-five percent of the home's purchase price. Don't they realize that their neighbors are laughing at them for appearing to be wealthy? They want people to believe they are big humanitarians, yet we never hear about them donating any money to help anyone but themselves. Miss Fedoseva made a series of false and highly defamatory allegations. She continues, "When that fraudulent scheme failed, sometimes I feel they do something wrong on purpose to get attention. We all did that when we were kids, but we grow up." May and Harry bought the property in May through a shell company listed at the Los Angeles address of her long-term business manager Andrew Meyer. The address was used by the Duchess when she set up her Frim Fram and MM Global companies, which McClure said could suggest they are worried. About the tax implications of association with the Duke, and they moved in six weeks ago. But every day, another story that only destroys their reputation more. Can't they see that the more they preach, the worse it gets? Plus, what amazes me about all these woke people, i.e., Meghan and Harry, what about others? Feel when they have so much luxury and don't share it with the homeless or less fortunate than themselves. That they claim to care so much about, double standards and hypocrisy at its worst in their book. If they want privacy, go live in a caravan on an island somewhere, get to know and contribute to the small community. Clearly, it's not the sins of the previous people; it never was. It's their hypocritical and preaching that's causing it to backfire so badly for them. They were criticized before everyone knew the history of the house. They paid an insane amount of money they don't have, coming from a country they don't respect or treat well. Then expect everyone to swoon at their feet. They showed their true colors when they visited my country at a time we did not need them. I can guarantee you that they were not headlining news here. We were too busy reeling from the attacks on our women to care about their doubt, let standards. Meanwhile, in the other news, Meghan Markle and Harry. Make more backlash when they join swanky private members club with 240k pounds initiation fee. Yesterday, Mirror Online revealed Prince Harry and Meghan Markle want to join a swanky private members club, which costs 240,000 pounds just to get through the door. The Duke and Duchess are said to be looking forward to the latest chapter of their American dream in their new home. By joining the club, every A-lister in the area has signed up to, from Michael Douglas to Ellen DeGeneres. Sources say the Sussexes would have to pay an eye-watering two hundred and forty thousand pounds, just as an initiation fee, with an annual membership charge on top. But that's unlikely to be a problem, as movie experts told the Sunday People, Megan Command. Fifteen million dollars a film if she ever returned to Hollywood. That would put the couple way above even the flashiest fellow guests at the Coral Casino Beach and Cabana Club, where they are said to be eyeing up a spot. The venue, part of Santa Barbara's Four Seasons Resort, is known for being an A-list playground. It is close to the mansion Harry and Meghan have bought in Montecito, in her native California. Michael Douglas, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and Ellen DeGeneres are club members, and it was also favored by Ronald Reagan. The number of members is capped at 600. The site has 22 acres of gardens, 
a saltwater aquarium bar with 450 types of tropical sea creatures and a children's pool and restaurant ideal for Archie. Guests can also rent the Private Command 24, which has its own two-story sun deck and private butlers. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle will face a hefty tax bill in California. Mortgage repayments will cost them around £30,000 a month, and they will also have to pay a yearly property tax reported to be £220,000. This is on top of bills for maintenance, cleaning, staff, security, and utilities, which could run into tens of thousands of pounds a month. The couple is also paying back the £2.4 million spent on renovating Frogmore Cottage near Windsor's Castle for them in 18,000 a pound month installments. Prince Harry faces a significant financial hit from zealous U.S. tax authorities. A financial expert has said, as he warned that the Duke and Duchess of Sussex had not thought through the high cost of Californian life, the couple spent more than $11.5 million on an estate in Montecito, where they plan to live and raise their son, Archie, in relative normality. But once the Duke has spent 183 days in the U.S. over a three-year period, he will be considered a resident for tax purposes and liable for the tax. David McClure, the author of the forthcoming book, The Queen's True Worth, said, California is a high-tax state, and he's likely to get a hit. I don't think Harry and Meghan have totally thought through the financial consequences of their exit from the royal family. The more their expenditure rises in California, the greater the pressure to generate their income in more down-market, commercial deals. That's always been the worry of the palace. McClure said that the Duke would have had to hand over much more detail about his personal finances and earnings than he would in the UK. The US taxman is much more zealous than his UK counterpart. For that reason, Harry will have to watch his step on the income he generates, he said. The Sussexes are estimated to have a joint worth of between £16 million and £20 million. The combined outgoings of property tax, mortgage repayments, staff, security, and the £18,000 a month they are repaying UK taxpayers for the refurbishment of Frogmore House in Windsor are vast, estimated to reach up to £5 million annually. The type of visa he has traveled on will be key in determining his tax status. Foreign citizens who marry an American and intend to reside in the U.S. must attain a U.S. immigrant visa to become a lawful permanent resident. It is possible that the Duke used diplomatic status to enter the U.S., but since he is no longer working on behalf of the royal family, it is thought to be unlikely. Meanwhile, with their malicious actions revealed, royal staff feared Meghan Markle could secretly tape Sendrium Summit. Today, it has been reported, staff inside Kensington Palace feared Meghan Markle could have taped the infamous Sendrium Summit with Prince William, the Queen, Prince Charles, before Megxit. An insider reportedly told the Sun the depth of trust between Meghan and the Royals was so deep it was feared she could record phone conversations. In particular, advisors said the four-hour Sandringham Summit on January 13th, which was attended by the Queen, Charles, William, and Harry, could have been saved to play back at a later date. The suggestion has been fueled by pro Megan biography Finding Freedom, written by journalists turned authors, Carolyn Durand and Obed Scobie. A source told The Sun, during the conversations at Sandringham, Aides were concerned Megan would demand to come to, on the phone and tape what was said to use in the future. Now that didn't happen, of course, but it shows the depth of mistrust between the Sussexes and the other royal households at the time, since the book that hasn't gotten any better. While relations have hit rock bottom, there is an acknowledgement that Megan could have caused a lot more damage by taking the nuclear option of a panorama-style Diana interview. The Sun adds, the source continued to the publication. That didn't happen and the details of the talks were kept secret, but the fact that there were serious suspicions is indicative of how bad things got. Now the book has exploded all of that negativity again. It's very unhelpful. 
Shortly after the summit, the Queen released a statement and confirmed Prince Harry and Meghan will be stepping down as senior members of the royal family. The statement read, Although we would have preferred them to remain full-time working members of the royal family, we respect and understand their wish to live a more independent life. Prince Harry and Meghan had been living in Canada since before Christmas 2019, hiding out at a luxurious property in Vancouver. The pair then moved to Los Angeles because, just as the North American border shut because of coronavirus, the couple now lives in Santa Barbara with Archie. My news this morning has ended. How do you feel about it? Please let me know in the comment section below and we'll discuss them together. Remember to like and share my news for everyone who needs it. And don't forget to subscribe to the Sussex Daily News team to get more news from Meghan Markle, Prince Harry, and other royals. Now, have a nice day, and see you this afternoon.